On October 14, 2023, we aired a story about the sinking of the Chinese nuclear-powered submarine Type 93, number 417, The Long March 15. Now, more details are emerging, including the fact that one person may have survived. In this episode, we'll update the story, and in the second half of the episode, we'll look at an incident that has infuriated the Chinese Communist Party, or CCP. That is, Taiwan has built its own submarine. Let's start with the sinking of the nuclear submarine in the Yellow Sea. In early October, the Daily Mail and the Times broke the exclusive story that the submarine had gone down because it was caught in an underwater trap used by the CCP in an attempt to target submarines from other countries. A lack of oxygen resulted in the deaths of 55 submarine personnel, including 22 officers, 7 cadets, 9 petty officers, 17 sailors, and the captain of the submarine. Here is a photo taken by a Taiwanese military fan in late August. It shows an aerial picture of a large number of tugboats on a search and rescue mission in the waters southwest of Taiwan, off Shantou City in China. However, at that time, the Taiwan Atomic Energy Association stated that if a nuclear submarine sank, it would be accompanied by a nuclear leak. However, so far, Taiwan's 63 environmental radiation monitoring stations haven't detected abnormal radiation values, and the radiation in the sea is within the normal range. These statements have confused the outside world. What has really happened? On October 19, 2023, the news broke on X, formerly Twitter, that there was one survivor while the others had died of hydrogen sulfide poisoning, and the post included Xi Jinping's initial reaction upon hearing about the sinking of the nuclear submarine. The X account named Luo Xiang uploaded a video a few days ago explaining the incident in detail. It claimed that at 8.30 a.m. on August 21, 2023, the Type 93 nuclear-powered submarine with the number 417 was stranded by a marked anchor chain during its mission in the Yellow Sea, which ultimately led to the incident. At 8.30 in the morning on August 21, on the Yellow Sea, there lay the beginning of the tragedy. The Type 93 nuclear-powered submarine numbered 417 had previously traveled a winding and complicated route from Qingdao through many waters and finally arrived at this peaceful sea. While performing an unknown mission, it was accidentally trapped by an anchor chain. The anchor chain was an invention of the CCP military. It means driving many metal piles on the seabed and connecting them with metal chains hundreds of meters long. Over time, the chains become covered with water plants. The CCP calls them their kelp, which is used especially to target American nuclear submarines. But this time, unexpectedly, the CCP's own nuclear submarine was caught. When the submarine became trapped, the captain decided to take emergency action. A diver carried four tanks of gas on his back, one of which was compressed air for breathing and the other three tanks containing hydrogen, oxygen, and natural gas for underwater cutting. The mission seemed to be successfully completed. However, when the sergeant-level diver knocked on the hatch to return to the submarine, there was no response from inside the submarine. At a critical moment in his life, the diver violated strict submarine regulations and chose to surface. There happened to be two frigates nearby at a distance of 1,400 meters which were on observation duty in the prescribed sea area as ordered. They immediately rescued the diver. After the rescue, the frigate tried to contact the submarine, but there was still no response. In an emergency, they asked for help from Lianyungang Airport, but due to bad weather, a helicopter couldn't take off to carry out the rescue operation. After the weather improved a little bit, a helicopter with a high-power air pump flew to the incident area. Accompanied by the frigates and frogmen's risky dive, the air pump and the submarine pipeline were successfully connected to the submarine in trouble and made it more buoyant. However, due to possible foreign matter stuck at the submarine's shaftless pump propulsion system, 
The submarine's ability to float was affected, and it floated up very slowly during the rescue process. By the time the submarine was opened up, the crew inside had already lost signs of life. For six hours, from 8.30 a.m. to 2 p.m., U.S. military satellites were high in the sky, silently watching the sea area. There is reason to believe they may have intercepted communications related to this incident. The CCP was aware of the U.S. military surveillance through its satellite monitoring system because both sides have the ability to detect each other's satellites. Reportedly, the sole surviving diver has attempted suicide or self-mutilation multiple times and is currently under strict surveillance. The contents of the black box have been decrypted and converted into digital signals that can be analyzed, but the relevant analysis report will take some time. The current intelligence all came from the report provided by the diver. After the autopsy, the forensic doctor pointed out that all the crew on board were poisoned by hydrogen sulfide. After investigation, it was found that the submarine wasn't equipped with such a detection device that the hydrogen sulfide wasn't detected, and no alarm was issued. So how does hydrogen sulfide enter the air circulation system? Preliminary inference is that potential operational errors might have misconnected the natural gas and oxygen pipelines, causing toxic gas leaks. The lack of detection devices prevented all personnel from knowing that the danger was coming until the situation became serious. The 93417 submarine incident has many other incredible details. For example, the diving cord carried by the diver wasn't the one he normally uses. The ratio of cutting gas carried wasn't consistent with the norm, and according to rules, there should have been two divers working together, one guarding on the side and the other doing the cutting. Why was there only one diver out of the submarine at the time? What sort of interference did the sub encounter? Was the submarine's communication intercepted by other forces? Was there a spy or infighting inside the submarine? All these questions need to be answered by decrypting the black box. Leaks from other military sources also point out that Xi Jinping received the news while he was still in the air on his way to the BRICS summit in South Africa. His first words were to keep it highly confidential and await for his return to deal with it. But a few hours later, the confidential information about the 93417 nuclear submarine was revealed on the overseas social media, much to Xi's extreme displeasure. The X account didn't specify its source, and the authenticity of the video can't be verified, but its claim coincides in several ways with what we revealed in the previous episode, that is, Yuan Hongbing, a scholar with ties to the CCP system, said he had received inside information that the CCP's nuclear submarine had indeed been involved in an incident but suspected that it wasn't an accidental mishap, but rather an engineered incident by the crew on board and that it was linked to the rocket force. Indeed, Communist Party leader Xi Jinping, who left for South Africa to attend the BRICS summit on August 21st, was suddenly and unexpectedly absent from the business forum on August 22nd, cancelling his speech on short notice and being replaced by China's Minister of Commerce. No explanation was given. In the history of the CCP Navy, there have been three major catastrophic accidents, resulting in the deaths of hundreds of officers and sailors. However, the CCP has never disclosed the inside story of the accidents, but people from other walks of life have later uncovered some of the truth through different clues. Let's review them briefly. The three accidents not only resulted in the deaths of more than 200 officers and crew members, but also exposed the inadequacy of the Chinese Navy's operational facilities and management. First, let's take a look at the accident of Submarine 361. On May 2, 2003, China's state-run news agency Xinhua News reported that a regular powered submarine number 361 crashed due to a mechanical failure during a drill to the east of Neichangshan Mountain, killing 70 officers and crew members on board. 
It was later found that the cause of the crash was due to improper command and control, but the specifics were not disclosed to the public. After the incident, the Navy commander and Navy political commissar were both removed from their posts. Now let's look at the explosion of destroyer number 160. In 1978, a missile destroyer of the Chinese Navy exploded and sank, killing 134 people. It was the most devastating accident in the history of the Chinese Navy. Although there have been many theories as to the cause of the explosion, nothing specific has been revealed. This vessel was the first warship to have served in the South China Sea Fleet. According to the official publication, on March 9, 1978, an explosion occurred at 2040 hours, and the ship sank at 2255 hours. The military described the sinking of the destroyer as scrapped due to an accident. As for the cause of the explosion, one of the most widely circulated speculations is that it was a deliberate act caused by a platoon-level official on board in an act of personal revenge. Going further back in time, it was determined that Submarine 418 bumped into a warship. At 1.40 p.m. on December 1st, 1959, a scheduled time for the end of a drill, the frigate Hengyang had already parked and drifted in a scheduled sea area according to the plan. It was training with submarine number 418. However, the watertight doors of the submarine weren't closed properly as required. When the submarine surfaced, it hit the bottom of the warship on the sea surface. The raging waters swept wildly into the cabins of the submarine instantly. In just three minutes, three cabins were flooded. The submarine gradually sank to a depth of 40 meters. Seven officers and 17 sailors, including the captain, died on the spot. Only 15 people, including the crew of the first and sixth cabins and the crew of the fifth cabin, who had escaped to the sixth cabin, survived the impact at that moment. Those 15 people waited underwater for 15 hours for rescue but gradually felt the lack of oxygen. So they thought of self-rescue. However, if a person rose too quickly from the bottom of the sea to the surface, the sudden change in pressure would damage human organs. In the end, among the 15 people who tried to escape, only one person who had been trained by Soviet experts survived. In recent years, the ambition to expand by the Chinese Navy has driven it to build larger and more powerful submarines, especially nuclear-powered ones. Its most direct target is Taiwan. In March 2023, Russia's news agency listed the top 10 countries in the world in terms of submarine numbers, and China ranked number one with 78 submarines. With the rapid development of China's navy, the firepower and number of surface vessels becomes overwhelming compared to that of Taiwan's navy. If Taiwan wants to break through the blockade during wartime, the only way to open up an underwater battlefield is to use submarines with counterattack capabilities. Because submarines are capable of medium range, long range, and long range voyages, and can silently sneak into enemy countries undetected, they can combat enemy landing fleets and also detect enemy information and carry out surprise attacks, etc. Thus, Taiwan's establishment of a submarine fleet will form an effective strategic deterrent to the communist regime. Taiwan's first indigenous defense submarine prototype was named and launched at the Kaohsiung factory on September 28, 2023. It was the first time the prototype ship was revealed to the public since its construction started in November 2020. We have to deal with the gray zone activities. We have to deal with the everyday military threat coming from China. And therefore, strengthening our overall defense capabilities in the traditional area, like strengthening our uh, Air Force uh, capabilities, strengthening our air defense capabilities, or strengthening our naval capabilities is a must. And having a new submarine is one of those strategies. Uh, so, you know, for anyone who questioned uh, Taiwan's submarine uh, strategy, uh, I would be a, a most forceful advocate for Taiwan to acquire submarines because that's needed for Taiwan to deter war from taking place. 
Before 2016, Taiwan had only four submarines, all of which were over age and old. Previously, although there were many countries capable of building submarines, they didn't dare to sell them or resell them to Taiwan for fear of retaliation from the CCP. Since international procurement is difficult, Taiwan's president has made up her mind to carry out a domestic submarine program. After Taiwan President Tsai Ing-wen came to power in 2016, she announced the launch of the domestic submarine program. It's one of the most important national defense strategies during her tenure. The plan started in 2017, and the government-run Taiwan International Shipbuilding Corporation is responsible for the construction. The budget is $16 billion to produce eight conventional diesel-electric submarines with a displacement of 1,200 to 3,000 tons. However, there is much skepticism in Taiwan and the international strategic field about Taiwan's ability to build its own submarine. After all, a submarine is one of the highest standards of shipbuilding technology. In a short moment, we'll name this submarine the Novel. Thanks to the efforts of all our partners, we have not only set a new milestone for Taiwan's national defense independence, but have also brought glory to the Navy, the National Army, and Taiwan. History will remember all of your contributions to this. The CCP expressed contempt for this, but what is said revealed a sense of unease. It is nothing more than a mantis trying to stop a car, and it will eventually bring about its own destruction. As for your comment about stopping the People's Liberation Army from entering the Pacific Ocean, this is a fool's errand. No matter how many weapons the Democratic Progressive Party build or buy, they will not be able to stop the momentum of reunification with the motherland, and they will not be able to shake the strong determination, firm will and strong efforts of the People's Liberation Army to defend the sovereignty and territorial integrity of the country. Why is the CCP upset that Taiwan has succeeded in building its own submarine? The question is comparable to why has Taiwan not built its own submarine in the past few decades? Submarines are a very complex and sophisticated type of weaponry that can't be built just because one desires to. It requires foreign technological support. For example, Taiwan has no R&D experience whatsoever in integrated warfare systems including sonar power systems, and such expertise is very difficult for Taiwan to develop in a short period of time. For a long time, no country was willing to provide such technology to Taiwan, but the situation has changed over the last few years. Now, Taiwan's self-made submarines have many countries involved, including support from the Australia-UK-US Security Alliance and Indo-Pacific countries. It's like a snapshot of the changes in global international relations. This is what makes the CCP most uneasy. In Taiwan's domestic submarine program, components are divided into three categories, red, yellow, and green zones. Equipment and weaponry that Taiwan cannot develop and produce, such as sonar, torpedoes, and other combat systems, are classified in the red zone and they are difficult to obtain. What Taiwan can produce in the future belongs to the yellow zone. The green zone are components that Taiwan can produce on its own. In addition, from a technological perspective, Taiwan's basic industries such as steel making, electric motors, and precision metals can meet the manufacturing needs of submarines, but they lack integration experience. Therefore, Assistance from several other countries can reduce the risks and time needed by Taiwan's independent research and development. The submarine, which was named Narwhal, has a 40% local production rate. Taiwan's self-made submarines can successfully purchase the required equipment and technology from many countries. Reflecting their concerns over China's increasing military power in recent years, despite the fact that those countries don't have formal diplomatic relations with Taipei. Taiwan officials acknowledged for the first time this year that the U.S. military was trading the Taiwan military. 
The British media disclosed Taiwan's domestic submarine manufacturing plan, saying that Taiwan has obtained technical manpower, parts, and other support from at least seven countries, including the U.S., the U.K., South Korea, and Australia. A Reuters investigative report quoted people familiar with the matter in Taipei as saying that in addition to the U.S. and the U.K., Taiwan has hired engineers and retired military officers from five other countries, including Australia, South Korea, and India. Based in Kaohsiung, a major port in Taiwan's navy, they will report to the Taiwan Navy and provide engineering advice to Taiwan's International Shipbuilding Corporation. Which is in charge of the submarine project. The strategic significance of the submarine cooperation for Taiwan lies mainly in the breakthrough of the previous blockage of sensitive technologies, including various types of hardware equipment, as well as assistance from invaluable designers and engineers. I want to thank all of our partners for taking part in this very difficult path to the submarine's construction and carrying it forth to the very end, so that we can accomplish this task together. I want to thank all of our friends from across the world for providing us with assistance and advice through different means to help Taiwan achieve this pillar of national defense. Many military experts believe that as long as Taiwan makes proper use of submarines and shore-mounted ship-attacking missiles and combines them with intelligence monitoring and detection systems, it will be able to create a deterrent effect on the CCP Navy that wants to pass through the ocean's choke points. Taiwan's military also said that the future submarine force is to confine the CCP to the first island chain.